I'm a huge proponent of the flywheel. Several years back, this company uh, approached me and said, have, have you ever heard of flywheel training? I had been writing about eccentric training for 10 years prior. And many of the things that I was doing with my athletes, I deemed to be very necessary and beneficial, but were, were a little bit dangerous. They were dangerous. And we'll look at some of those as we move forward here. And this company showed me their, de their device, and immediately there was a solution for training eccentric capacities that was not nearly as dangerous. Took all of the risk out of the activities. Flywheel training is fantastic because it can permit a greater eccentric force production. It's not mass-based. If you've ever used a flywheel before, and there's one to test in the back, it actually pulls you down into the ground. You can't possibly be passive on the eccentric portion of a flywheel squat or a flywheel press or a flywheel RDL. It forces you to, to have a resisted yield. Flywheel training is superior to standard resistance training for eccentric activation. And we see 6% improvements versus 3% improvements with standard classic weight room methodology. We've also seen that flywheel training is fantastic for improving speed and power output, especially when it's paired with traditional methodology. So although my talk today may sound like I think that eccentric training is the most important thing in the world, I really feel like it's just an overlooked portion of the training. And that we still need to do classic weight room methodology, but tack on, in an intelligent way, eccentric and isometric 